G'day everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today we have on Will Giles on the show and we get into this podcast basically how to overcome imposter syndrome and Will's story with it and it's a really quite fascinating story because he did have some like just he's just all these things in his life were just suffering and he got out of it extremely well and it was just a quite fan it's just a really fantastic story to listen to. So before we start this podcast guys, if you're interested in any of my coaching or you want to get involved with anything in terms of, you know, becoming a better version of yourself, being the elite most optimized specimen ever, you know, mind, body, spiritual relationships, health, all of that good stuff. Send us a message, send a message or click on one of the links below. You can find those and apply to work with me, which would be really cool. So I look forward to chatting to you if you jump onto those. Also, I have a recipe ebook available and that recipe ebook, I like researched all the best rest like ingredients possible, put them together in a whole bunch of recipes, meal plans, bone broths, all the good stuff. And you can get that in the link below. And I also have a bone broth discount with best of the bone, which is like the best uh, bone broth because it's like all organic grass fed cows in Queensland. And it's the way they make it is like a slower process. So it doesn't have any of the rushed like heat therapy. So all the goodness stays in the bone broth and it's absolutely amazing. And if you like this podcast, guys, please don't forget to give it a like, share, or subscribe. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm, which is really cool. And obviously, this podcast is brought to you by Eternum Labs. And if you guys are interested in performing at your peak and you really want your health to be better and you want no cognitive performance, Eternum Labs is the best supplement company for that. We've got a range of different products at the moment. We've just released a whole bunch of new like antioxidants and some sleep products like glutathione and apigenin. So I really encourage you guys to check them out. And if you use the code Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, you get 10% off. How good. So guys, I hope you listen to this podcast the whole way through because we just drop in nuggets like the whole time. It was really, really awesome to have a chat with Will about all of this really good stuff. Like it was was just fantastic. It's one of my favorite podcasts for sure. And again, if you like it, please, please like it, share it, subscribe it, put on your story, a little click wing. That would be absolutely mean the world to me and the podcast help us bring all this good stuff up. I also have a training program available. And if you guys are interested, please send me a message on that or click one of the links below and you can see a video of me basically explaining the whole thing. I think that would be really cool. So guys, without any further ado, welcome to this uninterrupted podcast um, brought to you by the Corey Poutwell podcast. So enjoy guys. G'day Will, mate. Thank you so much for finally coming onto the show. What's happening, brother? I'm so glad to be here. I've been trying to lock one of these in with you for a while now. So here we are. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, Keen man. As. I'm, so, I'm super excited. So what have you been working on? What's happening? Like what's coming up for you at the moment recently? What's been on Will's agenda? Oh man, so much. It's been like the most crazy whirlwind six months. Like, and I say six months because it feels like it's been a week. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But no, it's been crazy, man. So um, obviously with Filtered, our agency, it's just gone gangbusters um, with everything in the digital space. Everyone's like wanting to move digital, of course, and socials just blowing up. Uh, and then we recently uh, launched Double Tap, which is just like, we're so hyped about. We've had like an epic reception for it. It's kind of like, for those of you that are listening to this podcast that might not know what it is, um, it's pretty much going to like revolutionize the way that we network with each other. So with a tagline like that, it's pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I absolutely love that. How do you think, I literally saw yesterday, I was like watching something on social media and it was like Gary Vee talking about the importance of, of like your digital presence and actually being like mm. what's, what's more real how people see you or how you are digitally and it's like at yeah. the moment everyone has like you know each other and catch up digitally like mum like i live in a different state from my mum and she's a little like oh it's all good um i get to see everything yeah. that you're doing like this is great so like they say like your digital presence is really important yeah no i um I I'm a bit of a Gary Vee fanboy, so I saw that too. Um, but yeah, I agree hundred percent. It's crazy to think that, you know, your digital presence now is as important, if not more important, I would argue than your physical presence. Like obviously you need to show up every day and be you, but the first impression that anyone ever gets, well, 90% of people get these days is your digital presence. Um, like, you know, for example, with you, um, when I talk to people about you and I'm like, man, I'm, doing just coaching with this sick guy, Corey, they're like, yeah, I've, I've like heard his podcast. Or they're like, yeah, man, I've like, I've seen his ad on Instagram or something. I'm like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it super handy. So yeah, obviously yeah. 
I'd love to dive into the conversation because obviously we've been going through coaching for quite a while and we've been doing like mm. a whole bunch of different things and you've overcome some awesome challenges and I'd really like, you know, mm. just to like, you know, even see if we can get just a little bit vulnerable on this podcast, however vulnerable that, that, that you'd like to get, <laughs> however vulnerable you'd like to get <laughs> as comfortable as possible because obviously everyone's going to be listening to this. But um, yeah, man, so as far as the coaching and the, the journey with me, what's like your experience been like? Oh, man. Um without this isn't a paid post <laughs> just telling the viewers um but a hundred percent uh my coaching with you has just been phenomenal man like um oh how vulnerable do i want to get here <laughs> on a scale of one to vulnerable let's go like a <laughs> let's go vulnerable <laughs> um so i, I guess for, I, i'll paint my backstory a little bit that might help explain um my process with you so for those of you that I guess know me going back to the digital presence, like perfect segue on social media. I'm a pretty, um, you know, out there kind of like confident guy. And I think most people would say that when, you know, prior to meeting me or having that perception of me before meeting me. Um, but what a lot of people didn't realize, and I was really struggling internally, um, with imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs and business people who are listening to this can probably relate as well, because it's one of the biggest things that, you know, um, successful, uh, if for those of you watching the video, um, quote, unquote, um, people really struggle with. And the reason is that you have a perception of yourself where you think that you are. And I thought that I was at a certain level and then everyone else kind of saw me at a different level. Like they saw me as, you know, Will's ticking these boxes. He's doing all this awesome stuff. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's an elite operator, like as a marketer and like as a business owner and stuff. But for myself, I really struggled uh, to see that in myself. And that's, that's essentially, I guess, where our journey starts because I remember, and I remember this vividly, I was away on a, um, I was away on a Valentine's day weekend with my partner and um, Alyssa, she's amazing. And I was just really bummed out. I was down. I was, I literally like hit rock bottom in terms of, I guess, my energy levels, where my mind was at. Why um, was that? But, just quickly, just to punch, punch in there, because like, I think a lot of yeah. people who are listening, like you were extremely desperate for success at the time mm. and you were on that grind and, and on that hustle, like, yeah. like no tomorrow. And then yeah the story is really good i'll let you share it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, to answer your point um how i got there so the backstory behind the backstory <laughs> um <laughs> was i guess like as you said like you know my business partner sam and i we've been running filtered for a few years now um it's just been going from strength to strength but like as you know nothing worth having comes easy and we were doing like 60, 80 hour weeks. And that's not an exaggeration. That's not me showing some kind of badge of entrepreneur, small business heroism. That's me literally being like, we were week in, week out, working 60, 80 hour weeks, just going nuts to make it to, to make it a success. What time um, were you working as well? I think it's like quite fantastic just to punch on like what times were you guys going to bed, getting up? Oh uh, yeah, dude. So it was, it was literally like 7.30 rise get to like try to get to the gym try to move you know and then straight away in the office by nine and then we'd finish up at like you know 12 that night and like that that was like day in day out yeah. um i remember some weekends not, you'd message me and you'd be like yeah so we stayed up till 4 a.m in the morning yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that 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 was just um yeah that was putting it lightly because i don't want to scare people <laughs> but um but i i definitely to anyone who's listening just quickly on that point I definitely don't recommend doing that. Like I said, I really wanted to highlight that point. That's not a badge of heroism and like, yeah, love the hustle. Like, because it's all, it's all well and good. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be misquoted on this. Like you should definitely push as hard as you can because you, you're not going to become successful otherwise, but, and hard, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Like I love that quote. Um, but it's not it's not conducive to the longevity of what you're doing by really just burning yourself out and that kind of gets i guess gets us back to where you asked the question of where were you at and that's where i was like i'd been working so hard and i was feeling burnt out like and i've been burnt out a few times throughout my career but this was really bad like m my brain just didn't want to do anything um you know i couldn't get hyped to go back to work so 
you know, when you, that's another thing, when you get on this treadmill and you're pushing so hard, you expect to be at that level all the time. And I kind of came to the realization on that weekend with my partner where like, as I said, you know, we're on like a romantic getaway. She's wanting me to be all romantic and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I just want to sleep. <laughs> and like, worst partner. And, and I felt bad. I honestly felt like bad as a partner because I wasn't showing up for her. Um, and again, you know, Valentine's Day, is supposed, that's supposed to be the most present that you, you ever, well, apart from your wedding, that you are with your partner. And um, and so I was like, man, this is like, something's not right here. You like, got I, sick, didn't you? You got physically like, yeah, you were ill. Yeah. So I got like, in terms of burnout mentally, I got really ill and I, and I hadn't, uh, you know, caught like gastro or anything. I just got really ill. Like, you know, as I said, could like, didn't want to leave bed, had mad headaches, um, was like fever. But again, I hadn't caught any like bug or anything. And I was like, man, this is like, this is not a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, I remember I got, I got the SOS call. You're like, dude, what's, what's going wrong with me? <laughs> my body's, my body's shutting down. I was like, it could be caffeine withdrawals. <laughs> You're like, no, it's not that. <laughs> no, it's a joke. It wasn't. Bad. Yeah. Um, and that's actually on that caffeine point. I'm sure we can touch on that a little bit later as well. But, and that's also something you've helped me with, but you know, that as a, and again, another thing I'm sure business owners, entrepreneurs, anyone who's on the grind can relate to, you know, that you're pushing the limit of how far your body wants to go when you're taking external supplements, you know, like, um, for example, like I was taking modafinil, which is like a brain, uh, a brain enhanced, like cognitive enhancing pill like flat out like every day you should not be doing that and like coffee just had no effect right and that's how come when you're like caffeine withdrawals i'm like yeah probably that probably plays some part but um that's a, that's also probably another pretty good sign that like dude if, you, if your body is having to rely on external stimuli to be able to like not even perform to be able to show up like dude you you gotta reset man <laughs> like um so that yeah that i guess that's probably the backstory of how i got to the backstory with you um does yeah do, do you reckon there's anything else to add there or i reckon that's pretty much yeah that's pretty that much backstory. it i remember like we were, we were doing we were doing some stuff and you sort of like asked me for help and i was helping you learn a whole bunch of different things and like teaching you all the theory behind stuff and you know educating yeah. you like hmm, i get it i get it i get it but it wasn't until like you still kept pushing really hard and you're trying to do a million things at once mm. and and you were just like it wasn't like health or anything was a priority and you couldn't see the benefits of how mm. if you prioritize your health your work and business stuff would all yeah. increase as well and it wasn't till you went away with Alyssa for someone who like you care more about than yourself then mm. when you like had that time where you're supposed to be romantic with her and you were sick and mentally fatigued and that sort of like brought a downer on the whole like situation that you were like all right i'm on like i gotta i gotta do something to to, to switch this around because i'm not about this yeah, hundred percent. Another, th another uh, quote I love is uh, I've got it written on my board. You probably can't see it, but um, it's it's bigger than you, and for for like a number of reasons. Like you know, some people take that spiritually. Some people take that as like a philanthropic a philanthropic cause. Sorry, um, and for me, it's just like family. Well, I guess you could bundle it all into relationships. For me, at that point, I was like, it really made me take a step back and take stock of where I was business like you know in the four pillars of life for example um like health wealth relationships uh and what's the other one health wealth relationships and finances like um i was uh, sorry well whatever the fourth one is i can't think of it right now blanked <laughs> but um the four pillars of life and i was like cool business going nuts loving it like it's a 10 it's sick but the work hours aren't so great but yeah whatever you know business is crushing sweet relationships a zero <laughs> like after this weekend, like a zero. So that's not in balance. My health, well, clearly I can't get out of bed right now. So that's a zero. And I was like, and I can't remember what the fourth one is, but I'm sure that was a zero too. Um, and I'm just like, dude, like, okay, I got to balance this out. And like what you just said then, like pretty much hitting that on the head. It's like balance. That's the, that's the key, consistency and balance. And I was just going all in hard at business um, which isn't consistent. Like it's, it's, it's kind of like a short lived win. Um, and then, uh, and then that's what also made me realize I'm like, well, 
hold on, if I got if I got to keep showing up at this level for my business, like let's let's just take a step to the left here, um, away from the relationship side of things, like purely self centered. If I'm going to show up for my business and keep pushing on this path and this trajectory that I want to keep going on for success, I I can't keep afford doing this because what am I going to spend? you know, a few weeks of the year, like sick and like just not being able to function, that's not sustainable either. So that's kind of, I guess, the a compounding effect of all of those things as well. I was like, yeah, as you said, I, I've kind of been like dabbling with your training, like, Corey, give me some tips, give me some biohacking tips and stuff. <laughs> and you're like, dude, just when you're ready, man. And that was for me, like the, the moment, my aha moment in like the negative sense <laughs> where I was like, yeah, cool. This, I get it. Like, aha, uh-huh, I get what Corey has been talking about and I need to like dive deeper into this. So mm. yeah, that's, that's my backstory to the backstory. Yeah. <laughs> and then what did we start doing? What was like the, sort of the, the transition out? What are Man, the it's, challenges it's, you overcome in the yeah, <laughs> transition points and the transformation? Yeah. So I vividly remember in that, in that session, um, which was crazy for me. Uh, when when we caught up, I pretty much just outlined everything that we discussed, and I was I was thinking I, that I was going to go into that session, and you were going to be like, "Bro, drink more water, get more sleep, eat healthy, go to the gym. You'll be sweet, man. Spend more time with your girlfriend. Everything will be peachy." And I was like, "That's what I was expecting, right?" And then I remember, like, I I can still remember it. I got hairs on my arm like talking about this because it was so crazy. Um, I remember going in there and like chatting with you and then you're just like, yeah, cool, Jim, like whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We'll chat about that a bit later. That's like, that's like level two. I'm like, if that's level two, then what's level one? Um, And you're like, dude, we got to get this, like there's something internal here that needs to be fixed. And I'm like, okay, like, and and what, like, what, what do you think it is? And then after like chatting for a bit, we came to the realization that I was suffering big time from imposter syndrome. And even though I was suffering from this imposter syndrome, I didn't even realize myself. I don't think like I, it took me to have that conversation with you and pull back the, the layers of the onion, if you will. Um, although I'm sweet <laughs> um, <laughs> to pull back, to pull back the, la- the layers of the onion to realize like, damn, there's something deeper going on here. And it was that it was that, you know, because of what everyone saw, which uh, on social media and like, I guess my personality of, Will being so confident and being so out there and like all his, you know, filtered doing all these great things. Um, it kind of masked the fact that internally I didn't see myself as that and that I didn't see myself as the high performer, I guess, that other people saw myself as. And um, for those of you who might not understand like the, the struggle of this, of like imposter syndrome, it sounds, it honestly, I get when I say it loud, I know it sounds like a first world problem. It's kind of like, Oh, what do you mean? You don't think you're as successful as other people see you? Like, what's the big deal? But um, the reason that it, the reason that it really hits home, and I just want to put this into perspective, is because on social media, um, you know, it, it's renowned for being a highlight reel, and you, you, people just put up the best parts of their life, and people go, "Man, you're living the life," and they see, you know, cars and success and all this stuff, and they're like, "That's sick." Um, but it's actually, it's actually a really like damning self-realization when you're home alone or you know you've got some time to yourself and you're not living that high life well, you, like you are you are because you've done things right but in inside you're like man i just wish i could get to x level that people saw me at and or see me at rather and it's really it's really a mental fight in your own head and that's something i was really struggling with i was like and again, it's really bizarre to kind of explain, but the thoughts I was having was like, well, am I at the level that people think I'm at? Like, I know my social media shows that, but am I actually there? And, you know, like, well, if people see me at that level, then I should be performing 10x better than I am because what they see me at is, you know, like, uh, for lack of a better term, you know, like on the path to be a mini Gary Vee or something. And I'm like, and I don't see myself like that. I see myself as Will Giles, who's just this dude. And it's it's a really weird thing to come to grasp with. And I couldn't, I, I didn't even know I was struggling with it, to be honest. And I couldn't come to terms with it. And that's what you first and foremost helped me realize. Um, and then put obviously put a plan in place to start taking action 
every week, every month to start showing up. And I guess um, the way that you, that, and I'll let you explain this because this is your, you know, your theory and every, the whole process behind the coaching we did, but to go on the hero's journey and then become, you know, catch up to where you're supposed to be, like your future self. So I'll let you dive into that because the way you describe it will be way better than what I can, but... Yeah, I'm still trying to remember exactly what theories we went through because there, <laughs> there were a few because we had a few yeah. sessions and I went through like a few different theories and, and mapped a few things out. Do you, do you remember some of the things that we touched? Because I remember we dig, dug into why and we went really clear onto like personal stuff. We went into a whole lot of family things. It was like why you actually were motivated mm. to do all the stuff that you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then we went down of like, you know, what would happen if you you know, we're consistently doing what you were doing now. And then we pictured it 10 years and then we did, okay, mm-hmm. what happens if you change? And we just changed a few little things, like a few little priorities. And then what would that look like in like mm-hmm. five, 10 years from now? And you were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember we did that, but I think there was some other stuff as well. Do you remember some of the, the questions and the hows and the whys? And then I'll, I'll jump into. I remember the, the thing that I remember that really, sticks out to me um and again i've got it written on my board like it's one of the the key things that i remember from that session that just went whoa like okay was you you said to me you're like well that version of yourself like the future version of yourself that you aspire to be that you think that you should be more to the point um he already exists like as in you're not you're not creating something you're not like pushing and creating and learning and doing this stuff to become him you, you already are him it's just that your present version of yourself has not caught up to him yet and i was like whoa like that's huge and like without sounding cliche like so deep because i'm like that changed for me that changed my complete mindset on everything that one sentence because i was like yeah you know, like, could I learn more about marketing and business and stuff? Of course I can. Like, you can never stop learning. But, like, in terms of, I guess, the imposter syndrome of where people think I am and, like, where I need to be, well, obviously, I'm, like, that version of me exists because that's the version that other people see. So he's real. Like, he's a real thing. I just don't see myself as him. Yeah. I um, remember now. So we went through. Yeah. We were We really mapped out uh, sort of like, okay, so who's the best version of you and really what does he look like? What is all the mm. things, if anyone is listening, this is very important. If you just apply this to your own mind right now, just sort of think like as I'm talking, like apply it to yourself. If you're listening, apply this to yourself. Mm. So we went through and we were thinking like, okay, what is the actual best version of yourself do and what does he look like? And what is he doing every single day? Like, is he mm. working till 4 a.m. in the morning? Is he getting like super sick in Valentine's Day with his partner because he's working like super hard and just pushing his body to the absolute limits and it was like no absolutely not okay so what does he actually look like and we went through quite a few things that that were like little things that were missing and for you it was like a lot of relationships and i remember Mm. going through and we're talking about like what does the best version of yourself actually do and it was like okay so it's actually spending a little bit more time like with my family but allowing that it's not even like the spending the more time it was more just like scheduling it in and then maximizing that time as well and actually Mm -hmm. being present and acknowledging it because even when you were with your family and stuff you were constantly like thinking about work and all these other things so just learning Mm -hmm. how to detach by that so it's like what is this this person doing right and then let's just start like very simply start doing that like and what are the little things that they do every day and then like okay let's start doing those Mm -hmm. things every day and and then it was like, hey, so if you start doing those things every day, then the only thing that the only variable that prevents you from like the only the only variable that's stopping you from being the best version of yourself is just some time. And that's mm. it. And then obviously everything that you want, everything you desire is going to catch up if you're being that person and showing up how they are every single day. And then the thing is what we went through like with you is when we talked about like, you know, the, the best version of yourself and, 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 and doing that doing that. I remember you sort of had a question that was like, Oh, but even if I did all those things, how do I not like like, like how, how would I see myself as that best version of myself? Mm. And I was like, the only reason is you don't feel worthy to feel the best version of yourself um, or feel worthy for what social media is putting out um, mm. like that you're putting out on social media. Like you just don't feel worthy of that person who you are. And I'm like, everyone already sees you as that anyway. So mm. this whole time is all you have to do is 
Start doing all the things that the best version of yourself that you would do for yourself because when you feel worthy enough, the best version of yourself like was already there because you already had mm. basically everything sorted out. You just needed to shift perception and shift a few little things. Mm. And then we dove in a lot deeper. There was a lot of other deeper stuff we went into. But yeah, I specifically yeah. remember going through that and, and that was um that was a really cool exercise, man. Thanks for letting me facilitate that. No, that was epic. Like like I said, that that one exercise alone, I went in there thinking you're gonna tell me about the latest like training program to like, like <laughs> you know, optimize my biceps and then like freaking um, also take some supplements to optimize my brain. And I was like, cool, yeah, that's it. That'll be the fix. And like, I can hands down say that our journey, that one question, that one session has just changed the last eight, eight, 10 months for me, um, which I'm sure we'll dive into a little bit later in this episode um, about, I guess, yeah, from the hero's journey of like imposter syndrome to where I'm at now which funnily enough is still underpinned by the, what I put out on social media and what people see of me on social media. The only difference is that now I see myself at that level and I believe that I deserve to be at that level. It's kind of like, <laughs> actually, I've got, a, I've got an analogy for imposter syndrome. So <laughs> I, I think, I think analog, an analogy for imposter syndrome is like um, Stephen Bradbury, who won the gold medal at the Olympics when everyone else fell down ice skating. Um, and the reason being like, you're on this, you're on this, like, um, all right, I'm, I, okay. I'm just spitballing this idea. So let's hope it comes out well. <laughs> um, so, so you're on this, you're on this like ice rink and you're skating around this like business life journey that you're on. And then like everyone falls down or you think everyone falls down and you pass them all and you kind of, you're leading the way and then you cross the line and then the announcer announces like, you know, Will Giles just won the gold medal. And you're like, wait, what? I just won the gold medal. And then you're like, but did I really? And then, and then after you finish, you kind of take a look back and watch the race tapes and you're like, oh, but yeah, it's because everyone fell down. I wouldn't have won it otherwise. But in reality, you had been preparing your whole life for, for that one race where whether or not everyone fell down or whether or not you were prepared for that race. So then you won the medal. It doesn't matter because that is the reality. The reality is you, you won a freaking gold medal and you are the best at what you do at that point in time. Um, but but again, you still have the limiting belief in yourself. You're like, but did I really? It's like, well, yeah, it's hanging around your neck. Um, so that's that, like, you know, that's that's I think the best, the best analogy I can think of for imposter syndrome because that's exactly what I felt like. I felt like, you know, everyone else saw me as winning this gold medal, but I didn't feel myself as winning a gold medal. Yeah. Um, so that's just a quick, yeah, my, my little quick analogy on that one, TM Will Giles, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it was cool, but, man. Oh, sorry. But I just want to touch on something you said as well, because I think that's a that's a key point that I'm, I missed in my backstory. Um, and that is showing up for people in your life, but not showing up and being there on your phone, answering emails, um, not even just that, but having your mind elsewhere. Like I always used to go to dinner, you know, like with my parents or something, even with friends um, and we'd be out for dinner and I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, 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 cool. And then I'd be like messaging people. And again, not socializing, but like work-related messaging, right? Um, and like a, like a client would message me like late and I'd be like, oh, I just got to get this. And I'm like, and then I guess, I guess, again, you should have that work ethic, but what you help me to do is show up in those moments. So if I'm having now, if I'm having dinner with my friends, my family, Alyssa, I'll be like, cool, like phone's going away. I'm fully present in this moment. And again, that's not a like social media addiction issue, like where I'm just scrolling through Facebook while I'm with people. It was in my head, I was like, I need to be here because, you know, X, Y, Z. And that's not the case at all. What's more important and what I found to really help with that is, you know, as you put those, uh, those measures in place, but to be present with the people that you love and like the relationships you have. And like what you said earlier, schedule time for that. So now in my calendar that you've helped me put together, it's like, cool, I've got, you know, date night, for example, with my partner. I'm, I'm not working or touching my phone at all. Like that, that time is sacred time and it's allocated for that purpose. And I feel way better about it in my head as well, because I'm not torn between doing something I feel obligated to do and doing something I want to do. I'm like, I want to do this and I'm fully present in the moment. And I feel freaking amazing because I did that and I was present in the moment. 
Yeah. One thing that's really yeah. kind of cool working with like a lot of um, entrepreneurs and business owners and stuff is it actually like when we start to dig deep, it's really, mm. it's, it's always like a common trend of how important it is people are actually want to spend with their family. It's just happened to a lot of people yeah. that have just been like, I just want to spend a lot of time with their family. And then also, um, what, else is, what also is really cool is that when people can put their phone away, can put their business away and really be present and show up with their partner or their family is like they're more productive at work or they have yeah. like better ideas and the rest of ideas that they think like, oh no, I've got to get this done, I've got this next thing. And it's like, no, being shutting it off and letting whatever it is figure itself mm. out. They end up being, mm -hmm. more productive, being more productive and their output increases and their mm -hmm. ideas are better and so on and so forth. And it's just like yeah. sort of really fantastic to see. And I also just wanted to touch on real quickly is like for a while, you're like part of the hero's journey that we were talking about for, for your health because to be the best version of yourself, that was, that was, mm -hmm. what, was what was screaming at you. And you kept mm -hmm. in part of the hero's journey in quotations, you were refusing the call um that mm. time to like jump into that so you could be the best version of yourself and whenever you refuse something when you when the you know universe is just constantly reminding you to do something mm -hmm. whenever you refuse something it'll serve you like a like a like a like a like, a, like it'll serve you something not good and then like you have to learn all these lessons and it isn't until mm. you answer the call and say yes that like supernatural aid in quotations another part of the hero's journey which stands for mm. just like the universe energy consciousness whatever mm -hmm. unconscious stuff is just going to come up and support you and help you through and opportunities just um just mm -hmm. come out of nowhere and it's, it's it's just happened all the time and that like started happening for you as you started progressing and then like challenges and obstacles were coming up but they mm -hmm. weren't challenges and obstacles that you didn't choose and there weren't mm -hmm. challenges and obstacles like oh my god i need to sort my health out you started creating some awesome challenges and obstacles for yourself mm. so i'd love to talk about those and how you overcome them and how you felt about them yeah sure so i think um yeah as you mentioned like one thing about overcoming obstacles and the call uh, not overcoming obstacles uh like hearing the call and then um being pulled by that call is so true because i find that I find that with anything in life um, as well, in terms of like, you know, um, you, you've been thinking about taking the leap, for example, with like business, like I'll use filtered as an example. A lot, a lot of people, and again, marketing is actually a really good example for this. So like in business, we deal with a lot of small businesses, um, you know, and medium sized businesses with filtered, our agency, for those of you who are listening that might not know. So um, filtered is a social media agency. We do absolutely everything under the sun social media and we're really good at it. And um, what we what we help businesses with is obviously their social media marketing, getting more customers, getting more leads and that kind of stuff. And very similarly with Filtered, we always find that people will never come to realize they need marketing until they need marketing. So um, they'll be like, I don't need marketing. I don't need to spend money on that. Like, no, I'll save my money. And then, you know, they go through a rough patch in their business or they go through a cold patch where they don't get any work and they're like, damn, I need marketing. And it's only at that point that they really realize and they answer the call and then make the call to filtered. <laughs> um, but it's only really at that point. And um, yeah, for me, I think, yeah, answering the call, that was, as I said, that kind of like bottomed out in the previous like backstory. And I was like, yeah, cool. I need to, I need to like, I'm, I'm ready now to after that session that we had, I'm like, I'm ready this is my point where I'm calling up like the Corey, like bat line, like shining the light in the sky. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, I'm ready. I'm ready to answer the call. And um, I think, I think some of the obstacles that, you know, I, I, when I wrote out my, my schedule, I'm like, all right, so I need to show up and do this and this. What's the best version of will look like. And thankfully I had um, the social media ad like digital day presentation uh like uni presentation which was huge in like in terms of my career um i was like that was one of my bucket list goals i, I attended unisa i wanted to go back to unisa and speak um you know that was that was kind of one of the things i wanted to tick off and i had that locked in um like six months from when we started coaching so i remember saying to you in our session i was like man i would love to show up to that day um and be the will that you know, like the, be that future version of Will, but actually be him present on that day. Um, 
and you know like that that looked like a lot of things and probably too much to go into this podcast as to all of the little nitty-gritty bits that help me get there but you know as as you kind of said like cool man now we can go to level two and start talking about the things you need to start implementing you need to start going to the gym bro like you don't need to get shredded you don't need to get jacked but you need to do it you know to release those endorphins to get your brain switched on i'm like cool i'm I'm gonna do that (laughs) like you need to drink you need to drink water like you know so many especially entrepreneurs like we're dehydrated like we don't realize it when you sit in front of a computer out doing stuff you're not drinking water and then you probably drink like a liter a day maybe and then like three monster energies like you know (laughs) Um, so so just things like that and i answered the call with you because you challenged me you're like cool just start doing that bro and i started just ticking the boxes doesn't sound it doesn't sound like glamorous it doesn't sound like oh bro that's a secret hack i just started ticking the boxes that you laid out for me and then um with with the end objective of like i want to show up be myself be that version of will on that day and like i had that timeline i guess which really helps and i know you drum that into me you're like dude set a don't just set a goal like oh in a year i want to be this or in eight weeks i want to lose you know, four kilos, whatever, like set a goal that is a bigger goal than, you know, you can bite off to chew, but then just set like, and make it a long-term goal and then start just executing, 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 and just like, you know, really get into that routine. And obviously you, you've got that nailed because of your bodybuilding and because of your competing. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I, I guess, applied. On, yeah, I go. I touch on that. So yeah, I think there's a fair amount of listening. Like it's one of the things that I, really encourage people to do that you don't get out of like a psychology session and that is taking action on something because i always think how's the Mm -hmm. best way that we actually learn and it isn't Mm -hmm. writing it down it isn't the theories and all that stuff it's doing something and i love Mm -hmm. using the the formers instead of like all right just setting instead of just setting an a goal for this date whatever it is or it could be a goal financial whatever it is um people Mm -hmm. like setting goals it's like actually let's link something up that's really mm. important in your life that that you can do that's going to challenge you. That's sort of like an event for like you going out and doing the public speaking thing. Cool. Mm. So now we've got something to aim for. You've got a little bit of pressure there. Now you have the right excuse to go mm-hmm. out and crush that. So when temptation arises, mm-hmm. which is part of the hero's journey, another one, woman is... They say woman is temptress, just meaning the feminine, <laughs> goddess, right? Um, when, when temptations come in, so like, and like that sort of feminine energy, so let's say, for example, going out and partying is feminine energy. So like that can mm-hmm. be tempting you. If you get tempted to go out and party all the time, that's like, that's a feminine energy coming in trying to tempt you. But anyway, so as, as you have like the right excuse to say no to those different things. You can actually go out there. You've picked the event. You've got pressure. You've got to be vulnerable around people. So you've got to show up. That's why I do like like the bodybuilding competition. So I just wanted to touch on that. So just for mm-hmm. everyone who's listening in terms of your life, if whatever your main goals are, whatever you're thinking, like what's my most important goal? What do I really need to do? And if you've had some clicks during this podcast, now I just like challenge you the question is like, like what event can you link up to put in your mm. put into yourself, which is really going to challenge you? Like sometimes even just with coaching, for example, we have like, you know, I'm not sure if we went through it, but it was just like, you know, have this conversation with like one of your parents or talk about this. It could just be just a conversation. So instead of us just talking Mm. about this, it's like, okay, here's one thing that we're actually going to do, which is going Mm. to force us to be beyond ourselves, be bigger than Mm -hmm. ourselves, right? The thing you got in the back of your um, wall there, Mm -hmm. um, which is going to actually challenge us to do it. I'm just, Mm -hmm. I couldn't like encourage anyone enough to, to figure those little things out, but obviously mm-hmm. setting the time to, to figure those out is important. So, sorry, continue. I yeah, no, nah, nah, I'll, I'll touch on your touch. <laughs> we're touching together, <laughs> we're t- bro. We're touching each other. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. This turned real quick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll just touch on that. I think one thing out of all of that, though, that for me, it really, really worked um, was, yes, setting a timeline. But again, problem with timelines is that, and when you're holding yourself accountable is a lot of people give give um give like slippage tolerance they'll be like oh you know like i wanted to achieve this by like june say like my birthday's in june so like i wanted to achieve this by june but oh, i'm a few weeks behind that's all right like i'll achieve that a few weeks after or and then once you start doing that as we all know as i'm sure everyone's listening that can relate to this it's a pretty slippery slope. Like once you let it slide a little bit, you let it slide and then it kind of becomes like so pushed out of scope. Right. Um, So one of the things I would probably add to what you just said, Corey, 
is um, when you're setting the timeline, and this is what we did, so this is what worked for me, um, and I'm sure it'll work for other people listening, is set the timeline, yes, but make it something that, as you said, is bigger than bigger than you that you have to like, oh man, I really have to show up for this, but also make it something that scares you, like that makes you like poop your pants a little bit. <laughs> because, um, yeah. you know, because when you do that, there is no way in hell you want to fail at that at that point. You know, like same as you stepping up on stage. If you don't prep correctly and you don't hold yourself accountable and you step up on stage and, you know, you're rocking a dad bod, you're going to be pretty embarrassed. You're going to be like, man, oh, this is embarrassing. This is the worst experience ever. And no one wants to put themselves through that. And that's the same as me. Like um, just going back to the to that to the mid story. <laughs> um that's that's the same as me when with this with the social media day presentation. I was like, oh man, like this is a big presentation. You know, it's going to be in front of like the who's who of marketing in Adelaide. It's going to be in front of business owners. It's going to be in front of people who are paying money to attend an event to watch me speak. I'm like, oh man, like I can't stuff up. <laughs> like I have to be on at my A game at this event, and because of that. What are my options? Like, I'm either gonna pull out from the event, that's not gonna happen. I'm either gonna show up and deliver a subpar performance and be like a, sh a shell of what people expect me to be. And they're gonna walk away from my presentation and be like, oh, well, that was like disappointing. I'm not gonna let that happen. So therefore I'm pushed into option C, which is like, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna be my best damn self. And I'm gonna make sure that people walk away from that experience being like, damn, like what I saw on social media and stuff. Yeah. Like I can see why it, like it, it matched the story checks out if you know what I mean. So um, how did it go and how did you feel about mm, it during mm. and afterwards? I really want to hear. Yeah. That. So yeah, as I said, like the six months prep, amazing. Like I, I came into it genuinely feeling confident about like as i'm sure you know you do when you rock up to a show and you know that you've done all the right things i rocked up and i was like cool i've prepped for this i'm feeling good about myself i've got myself into a good routine you know i'm like i'm feeling healthier I'm, my mind's clearer all this stuff i'm like i'm ready for this like up until that day i was like I, i'm actually ready like i'm not nervous i'm ready then when i like, did my presentation went like amazing it, like to be honest I delivered like in marketing, like the perfect pitch, like the perfect <laughs> webinar pitch. Um, and, you know, didn't stumble on my words, delivered the slides, you know, everything else. Um, and then as I was doing it, it just, I wasn't, as I said, I wasn't nervous and it's not because I don't have a fear of public speaking, like contrary to what people might think I'm shit scared of public speaking. But the reason that I do it is because it gives me that adrenaline rush and that dopamine hit of like, oh man, I'm scared of this and I'm going to crush it. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, like I said, like a room of a couple hundred people, like in a lecture theater, for those of you, like I'm just painting the picture for those of you listening, you know, like uni lecture theater where I used to sit as a student. So full nostalgia vibes hitting in here. Then I'm up on the uni lectern, like presenting about what essentially what I'd done since I'd left that lecture theater and like kind of ticking off my own hero's journey. So it was kind of like, for me, a bit of a watershed moment where I'm like, huh, like this is what people see me as. And I've actually done all this stuff. And now I'm here presenting on this stuff. Wow. Okay, cool. And I feel like I should be here. So again, it was like a crazy, like while I was presenting, like nostalgic, like, whoa, okay. And I'm having these aha moments as I'm kind of going through. And then the, the biggest realization, I guess, happened after my presentation um, where, and this, and just, just so anyone who's listening at home, this isn't me like, uh, like gloating or like humble bragging. This is just, you know, in terms of, I guess, my journey. And so you can understand how, you know, how I felt after the presentation, um, it wrapped up, as I said, it went really well. And I had so many people like come up to me and talk to me in the foyer, like add me on social media. I don't use LinkedIn. I'm horrible at LinkedIn, but obviously as you know, a marketer, you should, I guess, be using LinkedIn to network. And my LinkedIn literally blew up, like just, you know, like viral blew up, had so many friend requests, like messages, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wow. Okay. So I put in the work 
uh, to get to this point, obviously, but the realization that other people saw me at this level and I just validated more so to myself that I am at this level because I just got that external validation today on what I delivered today. And I remember, and I remember, I know that's a bit of a like, it's a bit of a one to get, wrap your head around if you're listening, but I remember I called you like straight away. And I was like, dude, oh my God. And you're like, whoa, 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 like, what happened? How'd it go? And I was like, oh man, I feel so good. And you're like, oh really? So like, it went well. And I'm like, oh bro, like it went well, but that's not the point. The point is that I just validated myself internally to be at this level. And I should, like, I belong at this level. And you're like, yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I know. But I couldn't see it and I didn't believe it. And you're like, bro, I told you, like, I remember you're just like, dude, you just caught up to like the future version of yourself. Like that's, well, this is where you should be playing at. And your previous self has just gone caught up, like essentially passed the baton in like a relay and just been like, yo, Will, <laughs> here, take the baton. <laughs> I love that. Best analogy ever. <laughs> In terms of the hero's journey, that's like called crossing the first threshold, which is sort of like yeah. your entry into the new world where it's finally like, oh, I've arrived. I'm here. Now there's going to yeah. be all the best challenges and things that like tests and trials, which are going to be really good. And it's like mm. you know, really validating, which I thought was um, quite fantastic. And also to touch on another point there as well was I remember like throughout the journey, there was a whole bunch of other distractions and opportunities mm. that come up. And I think one of the things yeah. that was really important that we went through was really understanding like what was the best version of yourself is and mm. okay so anything that's not on this path is just shiny object syndrome yeah and you're coming yeah. down you had fever you're like imposter shiny you're like yeah. su super, shi <laughs> super shiny imposter man <laughs> yeah and yeah. um and i think it was really cool was even after that event maybe you're saying you're like we had all these opportunities and i was like no yeah. I want to do. I want to do what I've been doing, and that was like for me. That sounds like oh yeah, he's really on the path, and he's really taking ownership and responsibility mm. of himself and the stuff that he wants to do. And I was just like straight up impressed. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point um, that you just touched on. Then from our first, from uh, maybe it was in our first like session, but one of the sessions along the way, I remember again another point that really stuck out to me. Um, and if you're if you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, what well, to be honest, any, anyone who's listening to this podcast is applies to. Um, and you said to me, I was like, oh, hey, man, like, you know, there's this thing like the X, Y, Z thing, because as as myself, as a person, and it's just human nature, like you get, it's kind of the grass is always greener, I guess, as the like analogy of like, you know, you're on a path and sometimes that path can get a bit like monotonous and it's like repetitive and like whatever. And you see something else and you're kind of like, oh, that, that looks kind of interesting. Like, why don't I explore that? So again, for those of you listening who don't know what shiny object syndrome, that is pretty much it. You're just like, that, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go check that out. But you take two steps to the left and you, and suddenly you find yourself like in the woods and you're like, what the hell? Like, and you're so far from your path and it <laughs> happens so quickly. Um, and like any, anyone, anyone always gets these kinds of like temptations. Like it's not just related to business owners and entrepreneurs but i feel like business owners entrepreneurs they get that temptation and it's a compounding effect because not only do you lose like time you lose opportunity cost and money so it's like a triple like whammy um and so it's really dangerous for entre entrepreneurs and business owners to you know have shiny object syndrome so to speak um and yeah like that, that's one of the biggest things like a few times i remember throughout that throughout that journey I would, I, I would say to you like, bro, there's this thing and it's sick and this and this. And then you'd be like, yeah, but is it, is that going to get you to your best self? I'm like, no. And you're like, cool, get back on the path. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like, um, you know, and I was like, yeah, fair. And then, you know, there was a few times like that, but um, I guess, I guess the thing, the thing with the, um, with like the shiny object syndrome is like saying no to those things um the the one thing that you said to me which was just like oh damn like on shiny objects is like when you're so focused about uh your vision and where you want to go like you're so focused and you become laser focused on that you don't have time for shiny objects and i was like at the time i was like what are you talking about man yes i do <laughs> like but now um like where i'm at now 
and obviously because I've worked with you to get to this stage and it's been a process that doesn't that does not happen overnight I can tell you like the shiny objects start to decrease they become like a gemstone then they become like a like freaking little opal then it becomes like a burger ring and you're like I don't, <laughs> I don't need that like <laughs> that, the, sh- the shiny objects decrease in value like <laughs> or importance right um and uh, like, and they start to decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease. And then like, you get to the point where I'm at now where I'm so happy, um, I guess, with the journey and that I'm on that like, I'm so laser focused with what we're doing with filtered um, and what we're doing with double tap, which again, for those of you that are listening, double tap only launched literally like a few weeks ago. So um, I'm not going to plug it in here in terms of, you know, like go check it out and stuff. But in the next year, what's going to happen with Double Tap and Filtered is going to be huge. And I'll put like essentially putting that on record um, because I'm so focused and with the vision that we have for that. And I've mapped out like the next six months for both of those businesses. And I don't care what comes up. Like I'm not I'm not detouring off of this path. And that just I like finally at this point I'm at right now, I really understand what you meant about like, dude, If you have a vision and a purpose that you are so driven towards, you're not going to detour off of that path. Mm -hmm. And now I get it. Like, you know, um, I I was, for example, I was out um, uh, like celebrating the wins on Friday with, um, with Sam Acklin, who was on the podcast the other week and also like Sam, my business partner. And we'd had like an awesome quarter. It was epic. And, you know, we were just like, yeah, cool. Like let's celebrate. Went out, had dinner, um, had a few drinks and then I was like cool that was awesome I'm gonna go home (laughs) like you know and it's like and for those of you listening that's not to be like oh that's boring like cool what you can't live a life it's like no because in my head I've conditioned myself now to be like cool I needed that release like let off the pressure valve a little bit sweet enjoy it like spend time with good company and then get back to it like because my vision is so clear I'm like if I spend the day hungover or, you know, like, um, whatever. And I waste a day and like, or two days, I waste the weekend. Is that going to be conducive to where I want to go on my path and my vision? Absolutely not. So I'm so focused to that point now. And that's all thanks to you before I would have been like, hell yeah, let's do it. And I would have been out for the whole weekend. How does that Um, feel by the way, just being able to have that ability at the moment? Oh, dude. Amazing. Because I don't feel like I'm missing out. That's the biggest thing. I feel like people, when they hear, um, and maybe some people listening to this will be like, dude, I'm not doing that. Like, I, I like going out and like drinking all weekend. And that's fine. I'm not like poo pooing that. I'm not, I'm not here to be like, you know, almighty ruler. Um, but, but what, but what it, but the thing for me is like, I genuinely felt better for being able to enjoy myself. And like, as I said, as I was saying before, like be fully present. I had the best time. We talked about business and like, you know, relationships and life and all this stuff. I had the best time. So good. And then had a few drinks. Cool. But I went home, like drove myself home, went home and woke up the next morning. and was like, huh, that was a pretty fun night. Yeah, sweet. Like cheers to the catch up, lads. Boom, back at it. And that served the purpose I needed, which was to f- fulfill my heart, you know, around people that I want to be around um, let off, like enjoy myself, like indulge a little bit with some food and like drinks and stuff. But the best part is the next day I was bang back at it. And I got to have that experience without compromising my vision and my journey. How good is that? The best. So in terms of the best, (laughs) so for people, the best, (laughs) (laughs) so the best. So in terms of people who, um, let's say they've, they've started to get some success. They've started to Mm. start crushing business or whatever it is, or they've, they really just at a point in their life where they just want to start investing in investing in themselves. Like, cool. So I want to be better. I want to start Mm -hmm. sorting myself out, mind, body, health, fitness, relationships, myth, actually go on the hero's journey, understand it. Mm. Like what are some of the things that from your perspective that you would encourage um, people to like start actually doing like, or thinking Mm. about um, to start that journey? Yeah. So that's an easy one. Just get you as a coach. Yeah, besides, <laughs> besides the shameless plug. Besides me as the shameless plug. Oh, bro. <laughs> like, well, 
Okay, shameless plug aside, 100%, if if you are listening to this podcast and you're like, man, this sounds pretty cool and like maybe you're going in the same struggles I had, um, I can tell you from my personal experience and I guess as a recap of all of that, like I would, you know, I consume a lot of education material, right? So like um, I guess like, you know, I, I listen to marketers, I listen to personal development and podcasts and all this stuff and I've got a pretty good support network around me um, in terms of like my family. You know, my dad's a really... Um, like driven and successful entrepreneur himself. And so I can talk to him about these kinds of things. But the thing is that I wasn't able to even identify, like put this into perspective, and this is a like humble brag on your behalf. Um, put this into perspective, like I knew that I needed to do something and I was listening to all this information and getting all this advice and all this X, Y, Z, right? And But I didn't know what that something was. And until I came to your coaching and actually went, bro, I'm like, he- like help, <laughs> essentially. Um, I, 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 I didn't, I couldn't uncover what that was. And I don't, and personally, I don't believe any amount of soul searching and book reading and audio books and blah, blah, blah would have helped me find that. Like, so I guess that's a, like, you know, a huge, um, like a huge pat on the back to you because like as much as it's like haha like you know promote my business kind of thing like no in all honesty like i would not have been able to find that anywhere else so that is a huge like credit to you and like what you do and your level of knowledge so if anyone is listening like and you're kind of like oh i don't know like honestly just even have a chat to Corey, and i guarantee you'll be like whoa man this is like you know this this is what i need but external to that (laughs) um if you if you if you're not quite ready to take the leap there what I would recommend and what's really, what really did help me um, is to start journaling, which, um, you know, as in, in our session, you're like, bro, you have all these crazy thoughts going in your head and like to, to make it um, in, your, in your terminology, like the wizard archetype, um, which you can explain after this, obviously. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I was like, I was just like, I do need to journal. And I don't mean... And this is the thing, I don't mean journal as in like, oh, write 10 pages of a diary, because for me, that's not journaling. Musings. But musings, sorry, musings, yeah. So what I would do, because I have all these, you know, like crazy strategies and all this stuff pop into my head, I'm like, man, like I've got all this stuff going on in my head and it's locked in my head. And you're like, dude, get them out on paper. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I will start doing that. And since I started doing that, what I've found is my creativity in that time period that I've allocated has increased 10 X. Like I'll be writing something. And then as I'm in the moment thinking about something, I'm like, Oh man, I, oh, and I could do this. And then I come up with something even better. Um, and, and I've got like a whole book now, like a hundred <laughs> pages, no kidding of just like marketing strategies, marketing this and like social media principles and stuff. And like, to be honest, if I do this for the rest of the year, I'm probably going to have a book that I'll freaking be able to publish. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> um, so, you know, like that, that's been like hugely helpful for me. Um, the second one is just being like, just being mindful of your fitness and health goals. So like for me, I might be a bit different to some of your other clients because I didn't come to you being like, bro, I want to get in the best shape of my life. Like, that's not what I came to you for. But what I did come to you for was like, I want to be able to feel better. So have more energy. Like literally, I remember saying to you, I'm like, dude, I don't really care so much about the aesthetics. What I care about is like my energy levels and my cognitive performance. So like how I feel and how my brain performs. They're the two things I cared about. And what you gave me is obviously like a detailed plan of how to achieve that. But for anyone that's listening in terms of like, oh, cool, well, how do I do that? That sounds pretty dope. I'd love to have heaps of energy and love for my brain to perform better. Um, it's honestly as simple as just being like, what fuels am I putting in my body? Like, like, think about it, you know, like after that, I pretty well went, okay, that makes sense. So if I eat these foods, I'm going to feel better and my brain's going to perform better. And if I walk, you know, 10,000 steps a day, which is, that's not a big task. Like, you know, you don't have to go. Sometimes when I don't go to the gym, I'm like, oh, I'm not really vibing the gym. I'm just like, cool. I'm just going to make sure I get my 10,000 steps. And for me, that's enough because I'm outside getting fresh air, getting some exercise and this kind of stuff. And like, that's been huge as well. Just being mindful of what you eat and also, sorry, and also just getting some exercise in because 
as I said, like energy for me is so important because if I feel flat, I'm going to be flat and I'm not going to have these <laughs> ideas and whatever. So like those two things, like just musings, taking time to really just think like, allow, actually that's, that's the way to put it. Allowing yourself to think, like allow yourself that time to think that's it. Like in summary, whether or not you write it down or whether or not you just want to meditate or whether or not you want to, whatever, give yourself time to think like that's as simple as that point is. And then the second part is, um, yeah, your energy and well, I guess you, your overall well-being. But like for me in particular, my energy and protecting my energy and protecting my brain, they're really the two things there. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And I love that. And that's like a whole lot to unpack there. If you want to talk. Yeah. About this. I remember there was so much. I remember at one stage we were going through and um, like in terms of just like actual getting really good at because one thing that people struggle with is like, cool, actually spending time to cook, getting good food in, mm. whatever. So we go through, like, looked at your whole kitchen and was like, we need, yeah. to, we, need to, we need to move some things around to make it easy. Because, like, you know, yep. I mean? if you have, like, a Sparky come to your house to do the job of, like, you know, fixing all the lights, he needs the right tools to do so. And mm -hmm. it's like, if you're going to eat healthy, you need the right tools to use to actually make sure that you get yep. in and yep. motivated enough. So, yeah, I remember mm. we did that and that was really cool. So, nah, dude, yep. thank, thank you so much for um, coming on to the um, podcast podcast and sharing that that awesome journey and going through like everything and, and and like being super detailed for it if anyone has any questions you know where can they find you yeah cool so if anyone has any questions well firstly actually thank you for having me on um i was i was um i was really keen to do an episode with you and i think imposter syndrome um is something that isn't talked about um very often because a it's kind of a weird thing to wrap your head around if you haven't experienced it, but if you've experienced it, like what I said to you, I, like, where do you even, where do you even turn for that? Like where, you know, you don't, you can Google, like, how do I deal with imposter syndrome? And like, it's going to come up with some whack theories of some guy from like Sweden, like, you know, talking about some stuff. And I'm like, cause that's what I did. I was like, oh, well, like, I don't even know what I'm really feeling right now, but I know something's like not on. Um, so yeah, like if, if anyone just, I just want to like preface the outro with that. Like if anyone else on here is like, well, like, yeah, those things that Will mentioned, I think I've got some of those tendencies and some of this and this. You probably have imposter syndrome, especially if you're a high performer, because it's way more common than people think. Um, it's just that people don't talk about it. So like if you want to obviously like reach out to Corey about this, he's an absolute guru. But if you want to reach out to myself about this and be like, hey, man, like I heard you're podcast and um you know I, I really resonate how did you overcome this and this and this um you can find me on instagram at will giles with a z because will giles with an s was taken Damn. <laughs> um, rude <laughs> so um you can find me on instagram shoot me a dm i'm pretty um yeah i'm pretty active on there and then if you're interested in just kind of i guess seeing like the the journey of filtered uh which is the social media agency it's on all socials filtered without the e so f i l t r d dot m e and that's like instagram facebook um tiktok like everything and then the latest one which i, I really encourage um your listeners to go and check out is double tap so just to summarize what that is is it's the future of social networking um it allows you to instantly share all of your details and stuff, get rid of business cards. It's kind of like a digital business card on steroids. So it's like super awesome. <laughs> um, and that is on socials as tap, tap dot connect. Um, so go check that out. And if you're interested as well, like just for your listeners as well, if anyone's interested in actually getting a double tap, um, shoot me a message, say you heard it on this podcast and we'll hook you up a discount too. So Sick. yeah. Yeah, people would definitely enjoy that. And yeah, just to touch on imposter syndrome again is like, mm. I think everyone suffers from it, man. Like I suffer it as well. And it's just knowing yeah. all of this stuff to try and like, you know, catch it as quickly as possible and understand yeah. why. And then once you do, you can actually take the steps to like move forward and do stuff because man, it's it's it's, yeah. it's super easy to get, but it's also like, it, it takes a little bit of work, but work with someone else, I, I, mm. I usually think, unless you're like, really really cognitive advance <laughs> like, it takes just a little bit of a little bit of time and care to, to to overcome but when you do overcome it's like the best thing ever and like the hero's journey starts and it's all happening again and like as well as what, yeah. what i mentioned is the hero's journey isn't just one journey where it's like there's multiple yeah. journeys all happening at the same time so 
And so, so it's interesting I'm just, to see where you're at. <laughs> yeah, j- just on just on that point, that's um, how you describe that is exactly, yeah, is exactly right. Like I feel to summarize the hero's journey, I feel like you know I was I was like if we're going to paint it in that in that narrative, like. I was on a journey and I found myself like 10 steps in the woods where like the big bad wolf lives. And I'm like, oh, this is not a good spot to be. Like, I got to be out of here. This is not my path. I can't even see through these woods. They're so thick. And then like Corey comes in as like little red riding hood and is like, <laughs> f- like follow me. And I'm like, okay. So I followed you out of the woods. And I'm like, cool. Okay. It's getting lighter. I can see some sun. There's birds chirping. This is awesome. Cool. I'm on the right path, getting on the right path. Then we went back to the road, like the main roads, like pebbles and stuff. And I'm like, cool, okay, there's no there's no trees, no nothing, no big bad wolf. This is this is good. And then I could see like far in the distance, you've got that like, you know, that that dragon's lair with all the with all the gold and stuff. I'm like, I can just see it, but that's that's ages away. And then you're like, cool, well, let's just like follow me, like let's go through there and we'll get to that point. And like that journey started then and kind of like, okay, cool. Like walking along this path, doing some things, got sidetracked a few times, like started to find myself in like, you know, light woods. I'm like, oh, oh, get out of here. Like back on the path, got back on the path, eventually got to the dragon's lair, fought the dragon, slayed that three headed beast. And I'm like, yes, I got all the gold. (laughs) And then I'd like kind of leave, I left the cave with the gold. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm on top of the world. And then you're like, yeah, but now you're back on the path you see that dragon's lair that's like a six-headed beast i'm like oh boy here we go so it's like that's where i feel like i'm at now yeah. like i've you know I've, 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 I've like slayed slayed the demigod dragon but then there's a bigger badder one coming up mm. but the difference is i'm freaking excited to get to that point i'm like hell yeah let's go whereas before i was like i don't know what i'm doing how am i going to get there what happens when i get there oh my goodness like xyz now i'm like hell yeah let's let's like give me my sword like i'm so ready yeah and it's really important to just understand that you're there and i think that's one of the good things about actually learning the hero's journey and stuff as well was just like knowing what's happening where you're at what yeah. you've got to overcome when you're gonna to have to dive what's happening it just makes a whole bunch of sense if anyone is listening the dragon and the gold is always internal stuff as well stuff like within you that you have to mm. overcome um inwardly and then like the gold is always some sort of value perception inward motivation something like that which helps drive you forward um mm-hmm. to, to share your gifts it's always so it's always something along the lines of that so yeah if anyone is listening i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast yeah send us a question if you have any questions on anything and will man thanks for spending some time and coming on and yeah choosing to be the best version of yourself and um really living it man super proud no nah, thank you brother all thanks to you <laughs> all right guys Thanks for listening to the podcast. See you in the next one. Peace. Peace. Oi. Oi. That was sick! <laughs>